welcome. Thanks for joining us on this virtual roundtable for ACR Convergence 2021. Today, I'm really honored to have my good friends and colleague here, uh, Lenny and Tony. I have asked them to provide their opinions regarding some exciting abstracts at this year's Convergence meeting around psoriatic arthritis. So I also want to highlight another uh, abstract 488 on repositinib. Um, kind of exciting. This is a new mechanism. We've heard a bit about CHIP2 inhibitors in RA. Um, now we're seeing some early age data, um, a CHIP2 JAK1 inhibitor um, compared to placebo in patients with psoriatic um, arthritis. It's only week 16 data, but they're shown to have uh, some good disease um, domains that are getting better. So, uh, you know, obviously this is brand new, Len. I'd love your uh, sort of take on how we should think about these TIP2, JAK1, um, whether selectivity really matters, this combination. Um, now that we only have early phase data, what are your thoughts on this new mechanism? Well, I think TIP2 is a very attractive target um, in uh, psoriasis, it's uh, very involved in uh, uh, interferon pathways. Um, we have, there are a number of drugs which are uh, honing in on TIC2. Uh, Repositinib um, is a more traditional JAK inhibitor. It inhibits the kinase domain um, and has some selectivity for TIC2 and JAK1 um, and actually uh, JAK2. Um, uh, the data are promising, um, but I don't. I am unconvinced at this early juncture that the the selectivity here will be uh, dramatically different than our Jack One inhib our other Jack inhibitors, uh, uh, which target that domain. To Cravacitinib, which uh, we're not really talking about, is um, also early in development, and this is a, a more unique. Uh, MOA because it uh, targets the pseudokinase domain of TIC2 and really has some selectivity there. And at least in the early derm uh, phase of uh, trials, has not had uh, even a zoster signal. And we have to wait and see if that holds up in larger trials and moving into other rheumatic diseases. But um, this will be exciting in uh, lupus, uh, psoriasis, the uh, and possibly uh, other diseases. Yes, I agree. So clearly this class is, you know, sort of making uh, a splash and, and we're seeing in multiple rheumatic diseases um, that there are some good outcomes. But I would love to hear, Tony, what is the Jack class um, for you guys in psoriasis? Um, what are your thoughts on how the Jack inhibitors are working? Well, I think it, as Len mentioned, at least in in dermatology, there's a lot of excitement surrounding decrevacitinib. There have been two phase three trials completed looking at decrevacitinib in patients with psoriasis, and um, there's been good efficacy. Uh, the, out, the primary outcome was POSC 75, so not quite what we're looking at for some of the newer biologic classes, but still, I mean, there were significant percentages of patients who met that primary outcome and achieved at least a POSSE 75. Uh, the active comparator arm in these studies was a premolast, and decrevacitinib was shown to be superior to a premolast. And I think importantly, also, as you and Len pointed out, the safety seems to be, um, at least in these clinical trials, better than what we've seen for the other JAK inhibitors, probably because of the pairing with JAK2. So there were not hematologic abnormalities, there were not lipid abnormalities, and there, there aren't, there's not that zoster signal. So we're quite excited. Great, like really good to see all these options. But Len, you know, there's been a lot of buzz with the, obviously the JAK inhibitors and some of the safety signals in terms of the thromboembolic events whether this will be specific to certain classes or a class effect. Um, any thoughts on moving forward, uh, you know, with, with this and psoriatic diseases? Uh, you know, I, I, I think that everyone is asking that same question. And, you know, there's two parts of that. What is the regulatory agency going to say? And what are the data over here? Uh, regulatory agency has been very tough on this class so far. Um, uh, uh, based largely on data from tofacitinib. 
Um, Dukravacetinib in particular really has a novel MOA and uh, it, the data will be the data, but uh, this may be um, uh, something uh, uh, quite different than traditional uh, JAK inhibitors that we've had. But we'll, you know, whenever you, you know, you're talking about safety, phase one, phase two, phase three, let's talk about, you know, long-term extension and really get the number of patient years up before we get too excited. Yeah, the other interesting thing I, I think is that in psoriasis, Tony, I think the patients are a bit younger than perhaps what we see in RA. And I don't know if the population, you know, the nuances of the safety may may play a role in the future, as as Len says, as we get long term um, extension data. Back. Sure, absolutely. There, you know, these are just two clinical trials, and and may not tell the whole story. So, we always welcome more data and longer term real world data to really know what these medications are going to do clinically in terms of efficacy and their safety signals. Agreed. Excellent. Thank you very much.